Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is The Boys Season 2. Season 1 ended on a cliffhanger as Homelander just discovered he has a son, and he's being raised by his mother, Billy Butcher's wife, Becca, who turns out is still alive. But we don't find out what happened here for a bit. Billy Butcher is missing and has been blamed for Madeline Stillwell's death, and so the boys are now America's most wanted, Huey, M.M., Frenchie, and Kimiko laying low off the grid. Things are great for Homelander, though. His evil plan was a huge success to give Compound V to terrorists so the government would allow soups in the military. Vought, the superhero megacorp, Corporation didn't know about this plan, so the CEO, Stan Edgar, gives Homelander a stern talking to. But they are going to make a ton of money off it, so he's not that mad. Annie, aka Starlight, is still with the Seven. She helped the boys escape last season, but the only one who knows that is A-Train, who's still in his heart attack induced coma. She's still working secretly to expose Vought's corruption, and trying to maintain her long-distance relationship with Huey. Now they finally admit Translucent is dead, so it's time for a new member of the Seven. Meet Stormfront, a young hero from the next generation who's much better at TikTok than these old farts, and she's hugely popular with a cool calling it like it is vibe. Now soon the boys discover a super terrorist has been smuggled into the country. They go to their CIA contact, like if we bring him in, can you clear our names? And she would love to take down Vought, but wait, what's this? Her head explodes! Oh man, what new soup was this? Just exploding people's heads. But now it's finally time, Billy Butcher's back. Our boy's fearless leader, the R-rated Captain Jack Sparrow. For some reason, Homelander didn't kill him, he dropped him off miles away. He and Becca made a deal, spare Billy's life in exchange for visitation rights. Of course, this is awful for Becca because her rapist is now hanging around pretending to be a nice happy family. They're not in the suburbs, it's a secure bot compound. She's like, yo, get Homelander out of here, but it's like, we can't control him. And while Homelander's a sociopath, he does want to be a good dad, because remember, he was raised in a lab. That's why he has such a weird mommy fetish. In fact, he regrets now killing Madeline Stillwell. But wait, what's this? She's alive. He's got her hidden away in a secret sex cabin. But nope, nope, oh, it's the shape-shifting super. <laughs> Gross. Eventually, Butcher finds the compound. Yes, he and Becca reunited. He's gonna get her out of here. She's like, great, let me just just grab my son, and it's like, oh, you want to take the kid with us? That's not possible. Vought will never let him go, so she's like, well, I gotta stay with my son. Now, Butcher goes to their other CIA contact, Grace Mallory, the original founder of The Boys. They gotta bring in the super terrorists to clear their names, but turns out Kimiko knows this guy. It is her brother. Yeah, remember, as kids, they were abducted by this terrorist group, and Kimiko was supposed to be the original super terrorist, but when she didn't, now they sent her brother. But he's been indoctrinated. He wants to blow stuff up, so Kimiko's gotta help the boys capture him. Sorry, bro, it'll be for the best. They take him out to see to make the exchange. Meanwhile, Annie's been doing some blackmailing to get herself a sample of Compound V. But now A-Train wakes up and he's got proof she's a traitor. But she's got dirt on him too, knows he killed his girlfriend Popclaw, so they're at a stalemate. So she leaks Compound V. Yeah, finally they did it. Vought's going down. But there's a developing situation that could help them spin things because local law enforcement found the boys and Kimiko's brother escaped and caused a ruckus. So it's like, yo, Seven, go stop this supervillain and no one will care where your powers came from. But there's one last member of the Seven, The Deep, who was canceled last season after Starlight called him out for sexual assault, and he's getting his punishment, been relegated to a hilarious side comic relief character who's hit rock bottom. He joins a cult, the Church of the Collective, whose recruitment technique is offering you a fresca. They help him fix his image so he can get back in the seven, and now's his time to shine, cause the boys are out on the water. Yes, the deep, riding in on a whale, boom, blocking their escape. But Billy Butcher is absolutely insane and crashes into this thing, diabolical. The rest of the seven arrive, luckily it's Starlight who finds Huey first, but oh, she blasts him, cause home Homelander's right behind her. And he's like, look, it's time to prove you're not a traitor. You gotta kill him. But he's distracted when Kimiko's brother drops a train on him. These two escape, but now Stormfront catches up to him with her lightning powers. Boom! And Stormfront seems not to care about collateral damage. She kills some civilians on purpose. Yeah, there's just no good heroes. Much like Homelander, she's also a psychopath and kills Kimiko's brother. And now, after stopping a supervillain, Vought's able to spin the Compound V thing and face zero consequences. Now Stormfront, the meme queen, is more popular than ever, and Homelander doesn't like being upstaged. And now he's got a new problem when a video surfaces of him not caring about civilian casualties. An AOC type, Congresswoman Newman, is trying to bring Vought and Homelander to justice, and Homelander's usual tricks just aren't working anymore. Now there's a constant background fear that at any moment, Homelander might finally snap and start lasering people willy-nilly. But he holds himself back for now. He craves the people's love too much. Instead, he goes to Stormfront, who sets him up on the poning liberal snowflakes fake news awfulness. And tragically, it just works so well, the whole MAGA crowd crowd just loves him. And pretty soon he and Stormfront get it on. Superhero style cause a lot of property damage. Now back to the boys. The mission continues. They got a tip about an old soup named Liberty. They find out that back in the 60s, the superhero Liberty killed this woman's brother just for being black. Yeah, that's awful, but why'd it come up now? Well, turns out Liberty is Stormfront, who apparently doesn't age. And she's even older than they know. Not just a racist, but a literal Nazi. 
Starlight does some snooping and finds her secret project, an off-the-books facility with a bunch of soups with powers that don't quite work. Yes, Compound V only works well on babies, but they're trying to stabilize it in adults so they can make a soup out of anyone they want. And working here is a fire starter soup, former member of the Seven, Lamplighter. We finally get the story of when the boys were an official team, they blackmailed Lamplighter to be their mole at Vought, but he didn't like that and killed Mallory's grandchildren. As they're leaving, Frenchie gets made, and in the scuffle, a test subject breaks out, and they are not in a good mood. To survive, our team's gotta work with Lamplighter, and as they get to talking, he feels bad he didn't know the kids were in the house. Now he's willing to make things right by testifying against Vought at the upcoming congressional hearing. Huey babysits while he goes on a porn bender, but now Vought has captured Starlight, so Huey's gotta convince him to help him break in and rescue her. Once inside, though, Lamplighter doesn't help, he decides to just end things. Luckily, that sets off the alarms, which lets Starlight absorb some power and boom, blast out of there. But now here to stop her is Black Noir, another member of the Seven who never talks and is equal parts hilarious and terrifying. But stepping in to save Starlight is Queen Maeve, who defeats Black Noir with an almond joy because he's allergic to nuts. So it's time for the hearing, but without Lamplighter, they lost the star witness. But Butcher found an even better one, Bot's old chief science officer, who knows all the dirty secrets. Butcher intimidated him into testifying, basically, by drinking tea really menacingly. So this is it. The heroes can't kill him on live TV unless you had a soup with head-exploding powers that come out of nowhere. And whoever it is, they explode a ton of heads. The hearing is cancelled. And after this attack on Congress, the government orders a bunch of the new Adult Safe Compound V so they can make a ton of new soups to protect us. Which plays perfectly into Stormfront's secret plan. She'll just make sure only white supremacists get the doses. Now Homelander and Stormfront have fallen in love, and it's like, hey, let me come take you to meet my son. But they get annoyed with Becca here, so finally decide to just take him away. So Becca escapes and goes to Butcher, please help me get my son back. But Butcher makes a secret deal with Stan Edgar, I'll get Homelander away from the kid, you can take him back, then me and Becca are off the hook. Meanwhile, on the Stormfront front, they get help from an unexpected source, it's A-Train. He just got kicked off the Seven for being too slow now, and here to help him out is his old friend The Deep with a fresca. And he finds out the real reason he was kicked off is because Stormfront is a racist. So it's like, look, we aren't friends, but she's gotta go down, so he helps them leak her Nazi photos, which even the MAGA crowd can't get behind. With Stormfront distracted, they begin Operation Distract Homelander to get Becca's son back, and Butcher has a change of heart, I'm not gonna give him back to Vought. But when Homelander finds out Vought was planning to take his son away, he is none too pleased. But now Stormfront comes back, so it's a big old Supergirls fight. Stormfront's gonna win, but another one joins, it's Queen Maeve again. They tried to recruit her earlier, but she wasn't interested, but now she decided to do the right thing. Altogether, they're winning, so Stormfront's gonna fly out of there. She goes to get the kid back, gonna kill Becca Butcher, let go my mom. He hasn't really been able to use his powers yet, but now with his mom in danger, his eyes light up, and whoa, totally wrecked Stormfront. But tragically, his mom was standing too close. She's hit too. It's like, Billy, it's not his fault. You gotta promise me you'll help raise him right so he'll be a good guy. And Butcher's wife, who he thought was dead and dedicated his life to avenging, now dies for real in his arms. Now Homelander shows up and is sad to lose his Nazi girlfriend. At least he still has his son, but his son's choosing Butcher. There's no one to stop him this time. Homelander's gonna kill him, but Queen Maeve comes to save him again. But not with a super fight with their even stronger weapon, blackmail. Yeah, there was a whole thing with Queen Maeve's ex-girlfriend, and when Homelander found out, he outed her on live TV just to mess with her and force her into the public relationship she never wanted. And it's like, look, you're gonna stop messing with me or I release it, and I guess while I'm here, I'll make not killing Butcher a part of the deal too. And so Homelander, whose reputation is more important to him than anything else, lets his son go. So the day is saved. Well, kind of. Nazi Stormfront is stopped and Compound V is put on hold, but Vought still evades any real consequences. Maven Starlight's still part of the Seven in a nice little stalemate with Homelander, and Homelander back to his good guy persona, although it seems like he's starting to crack. His son goes off with the CIA, hopefully to be raised right, away from Bot and Homelander, and they're reinstating Mallory with the boys as an official, off the books, taken down superhero team. And their names are cleared, they can go home to their families, Huey and Annie get to date again openly. By the way, Frenchie and Kimiko have their romance going too. There's good news for A-Train, he's back on the Seven, but they can't take both of them, so the Deep is still a loser. But then, as cult leader's talking to Congresswoman Newman, he opens a fresca and and boom, his head explodes. Turns out the head exploder soup is Congresswoman Newman herself. What game is she playing? We'll find out because our boy Huey has just started working for her and that's where the boys season two comes to an end. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.